Hello everyone, my name is Uluwadara Simi Gloria Gumba Oyo. I am a child of God. I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm a poet, a writer, um, and I love the Lord with all my heart. <laughs> Welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. That's the toys. toys behind the movies. movies. This is Beyond Entertainment. And this is Beyond Entertainment. I love the Lord and I'm into um, ministry, like I've said. And I pastored the Davidic Generation Church with my husband, Lawrence Oyo. It's, it's been an amazing experience so far, given that I wasn't in that line of, um, I'm saying that area of the vineyard <laughs> before I got married, but it's been such a rewarding experience, intentionally serving people and being intentional about seeing their growth. So pastoral work is truly, it's, it is truly a calling and it is something that would um, pull out the sincerity of your service to God. It will intentionally do that. So yes, it has been an amazing experience. A very rewarding and amazing experience, yeah. John, are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm okay. Maybe I've been calling you since morning and you've not picked up, why? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I was having my morning devotion. It's 1 p.m. What, 1 p.m.? Oh, I've been praying since 6 a.m. I'm sorry. What are you even praying about? Our ministry, the assignment the Lord gave to us. You know Caleb in the Bible? He claimed the mountain when he was very old. I don't want to wait until I'm old before I claim this mountain. I want the mountain now. This mountain is mine. It's mine. OK, I'll be praying for you. Oh, thank you. What are you doing? Mm. I'm watching my favorite Telemundo TV series, Red Roses. Do you know that Roberta and Juliana are finally getting married? Oh, that's great. Wonderful. Hope they have gone to the marriage committee for further counseling. What? Yes, so advise them to do that. Because that is the only condition they are going to allow them to conduct their wedding in this church. I'm confused. What is the problem? Roberto and Juliana, they are the central characters of the TV series. Uh, oh. Who do you think they were? I I thought they were members of our church. John, you promised me you would watch this now. How many episodes have you watched? Sister Debbie, to, to be honest with you, I've been quite busy. So busy that you don't have time to honor my request. It's so sad. The whole season passed and you couldn't even watch one episode. The most annoying part is that you're going to miss the wedding of Roberto and Juliana. Debbie, okay, when you see them, let me apologize to them. The, the fact is, there are more important things to deal with. So I'm not important. You are. Roberto is not important. Debbie. Juliana is not important. Everyone is important to the Lord. You think I'm childish. You think I'm disturbing you. If you can't honor simple requests like this, how will you honor the main ones when we get married? Tepi, remember we have assignments. Remember we have commitments. We both decided we are going to read the Bible from back to back this year. Of which I'm lagging behind. Even the vision for the teenage girls has been dormant. And you have an important part to play. If all these assignments are not executed, there's no way I will have time to attend the wedding of Emboda Robato and Sister Juliana. Eh? I play the role of Sister Debbie in the movie Bimi. And um, what I could even, what I could glean from that movie is that a person doesn't have to be a non believer before he is unequally yoked with a believer. You know, it's not just about he's a Christian. It's not just about him, you saying she's a Christian. She, we go to the same church. It's not just about that. There are times that you must look at the assignments God has placed before you as a man and as a woman. Um, the pastoral work has been a very rewarding experience, given the fact that I wasn't in that side of the vineyard before I got married. But it has been a very rewarding, challenging, interesting, and inspiring time for me so far. Um, it will truly test your sincerity and it will prove your love walk. You know, as much as we 
we are used to saying we love you jesus we love you jesus how much do you love the sheep how much do you love the body of christ so um pastoral work will really <laughs> test that so yeah it has been a very rewarding experience oh so you plan on banking on my income debbie not that and then if if i go to back on god actually if god needs your income then so be it john debbie what is it can two work together except they agree no they can't then we can't work together how do you mean we are done don't 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 with what with what actually done with us I don't, I don't understand. We are in a different frequency. We can't work. Debbie, our introduction is next week. A broken introduction is better than a broken marriage. Ha! Debbie! My, my, my mom has been calling. She calls every night. She can't wait to see you. Debbie, she calls you her daughter. I have a mother. So she's definitely not my mother. So tell her that I'm sorry, but her mind is made up. It's over. Debbie! That's too harsh. Yes, I played the role of Sister Debbie in the movie Bimmy, who was this very hippie, love, um, lovely, but a lover of fun, <laughs> a lover of fun Christian. Um, what I could glean from the movie is that you don't have to be, or someone doesn't have to be an unbeliever before he or she is unequally yoked with you as a believer. You know, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? The Bible wasn't exactly specific to um, you being an unbeliever. It's just the agreement, the synchronization of your ministry, of your assignment, of your um, walk, of your purpose. You know, if you are looking at somebody to settle down with and this person has no interest in what the Lord has told you has no interest in what you are doing you could just sense the opposition to the assignments that you have in your hands then it's something that you really should look into again even if the person's a Christian even if the person is good in quote so yes I could really learn that from the movie because Debbie wasn't exactly a bad person she just wanted to secure her future <laughs> which is what they advise a lot of you know people to do with the motivational speeches but this man was more in the missionary and the sacrificial living you know side <laughs> of the vineyard but she was more of the security security conscious um, side so it's just important that you um, you sit down and you be honest with yourself you have to be sincere with yourself there's a scripture that says um that you know the lord was speaking and it says if you come to me with idols in your heart i'll answer you based on the, that idol in your heart so some people go to god with an already made up mind and they expect god to you know give them an answer that is that is you know opposite from what they have in mind but then they already like they know what they want to do but that is not how you talk to god you have to be sincere and be honest with yourself you know that too go far in life and to you know have a fulfilling time together with the lord she's mrs alexandra mrs alexandra is a speech therapist and coach hello good, good, good afternoon good afternoon please introduce yourself his name is Testy. Mm, Mr. Francis, I'm not talking to you. Oh, so sorry, my bad. <laughs> yes, I'm all ears. Ma, 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 my name is the, the, the Testimony. All right, so this will be our first lesson, okay? I want you to practice an exercise. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale. All right, before you say your words, hmm, rehearse them in your mind. Once you can get them approved in your mind, then you let it out. No rush, okay? Now, what is your name? My name is Testimony. Yes! <laughs> Recitation, yes, it was truly, <laughs> was truly an interesting script, and it's it's more it's it was truly an interesting script, and the role I played was, it's funny how I'm always given this role of being, 
you know, the, 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 the commonsensical Christian one that is opposed to faith and all. Anyway, I played the role of the, um, is it language instructor, the um, phonetics um, teacher or instructor. So I was the one that was using logical, you know, reasoning to look at the situation as opposed to my partner or my friend or the person that was supposed to um, manage the situation together. He was looking at faith. He was looking at the Lord. He was looking at what the Lord has said. What I could learn is um, the voice of God is higher than fact. Once you've gone to meet the Lord about an issue and the Lord has said this, you should stop looking at the physical circumstances and pay more attention to what the Lord has said. It is not to dissuade your sense of reasoning. It is not to remove wisdom in quotes. But when the Lord has said something, for example, if you can see that you have, you don't have enough money to purchase something, logically speaking, you don't have enough money, but then God has said, this is what you are going to get, not another one. Now it is up to you to take your eyes off what you have in your hands and rather bank on what the word of God says. God has told you that you get it. Fine. I will get it. You know, but this particular teacher, the role I played, she was so fixed on logic. He's a stammerer. There is no way he can be able to do this and this and this. But then she has forgotten the fact that we serve the Lord, the maker of our tongue. Like, you know, like what the Lord told Moses, that who made man's tongue, who made his hands, who made his feet, you know. So you must learn to always step aside or rather shut down our sense of reason when the Lord is speaking, because the Lord can definitely defy the laws of gravity, defy the laws of physics to perform his word. Running from my past, running for safety, running for freedom. Do you know why? No, you tell me why. Because I was hunted. Haunted, yes. Um, I thank God for haunted. <laughs> haunted, haunted came about when um, I was in that, um, I was in that season of script writing. I would call it that way. So I, I wrote Agonies of the Doubtful around that time as well. I also wrote Haunted. Agonies of the Doubtful was put into a playbook, and Haunted when I gave it to Dad. He said there's something here that it could be, you know, we could bring it to the screen. He handed it over to my brother, Damilola Mike Bamiloe, and he helped shape in it. And to the glory of God, Haunted was shot and released. Um, I can't, <laughs> I would say that, I, I would say that many times how, how I get stories is I would see, I would literally, I'll be acting the story. As I'm going about my day-to-day -day activities, it is funny and it is weird, but I realize me and D Baba, as we fondly call it, we have the same way of receiving stories sometimes. Because many times, I remember when we, we, we were younger, and I would sneak up on, I'm like, and he'll be talking to himself, <laughs> and he'll be saying, "No, you cannot do this. You can't do." It. <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, <laughs> "What's it? That catches me. He <laughs> would not be chasing me because I'll be laughing. I'm like, you know, I'll be like, don't tell anybody or something. It'll be so funny. So I realized that okay, because that 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 is literally how I receive my stories. So I'll just be talking to myself, and I'll be saying the lines of some characters, you know, so I just realized I was getting the story of, you know, Rebecca, the story of the people that uh, took her in. I was just seeing the story it was in my mind. And then I was asking it out as I was going about my day's activity. And I realized, okay, I, I need to put this down. And then I put it down and then to the glory of God, it was acted, it was, it was acted out and it was released and it's blessing lives today. As for the next project, um, I, <laughs> I delved into um, spoken word poetry and um, a couple of other projects that were also nudging at my heart. And I believe by the grace of God, we're going to go, you know, around a full cycle and we're going to go back to the script writing phase, but it's truly a matter of time. So. <laughs> um, spoken word poetry. 
I first discovered it um, just by accident, I would call it that. It's seemingly by accident, but nothing is a coincidence for the child of God. But I stumbled on it when my brothers were listening to a particular spoken word, spoken word poetry by an American artist. It was so captivating and interesting and they just, you know, enjoyed it and that was it. But I listened to it and it just stuck with me for some reason. I, I, I had no idea why, but it stuck with me. And so that was that. Then I entered the university. I started writing poetry before I entered the university. So poetry had been on even way before spoken word poetry. So I entered the university. I blessed the Lord for the course I studied. I blessed the Lord even more for the friends that he paired me with. One of my friends just said, have you heard of spoken word poetry? And I was like, what is that? And then he sent me a few videos and I was captivated again. And then... It just began. I picked up a pen and I said, I can do this. I can do this. And then I started. My first book of poetry was titled Justice. <laughs> Justice. I ministered that back in Babcock University. But then when J. Mikey realized, okay, you can do spoken word poetry, he told me that he wanted me to do one titled Spirit Move and that he wants to do an a cappella. So he wants me to do Spirit Move. And so I set out and I wrote Spirit Move and then we shot it and I realized, wow, this is actually something that can keep going. And I bless God for Daddy, Mike, Mommy, Gloria. They are massive encouragers and pushers <laughs> of gifts. So Daddy said, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep writing, keep writing. So I, I kept writing. I wrote the first one, the second one. And there was a massive explosion of spoken poetry when I was in Babcock University. It would just come. At a point, the idea will just come. That is why I realized that okay, it was actually a, it was there, there was a phase of ease and spontaneity. I would literally just be in the room and then I'll just start saying the lines, and I would start writing and then I'll just keep going and going and going, and it will keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Many times I wouldn't know what or where I was going till I finished. You know, so there was just this ease and it was it was massive in Babcock University that when I when to when i when i um started my nyse i there was there was a pause i, I guess maybe because of the numerous you know back to back because i was also an executive and um yeah there was a pause but it didn't stop i was writing one minute book word poetry that i would post on instagram but after nyse i delved into something something completely different. I think I think that was when um, I started focusing on the script writing aspect. So yeah, so spoken word poetry, that has been amazing. It is still amazing because it is actually still on, <laughs> you know, so that is how spoken word poetry started. Now the spoken word ministry, I see spoken word as, um, as prophetic words declared onto the generation. You know, a lot of people just see it as art and it is actually art. But not, no art is, um, no art is harmless when it's when it is placed in the hands of God. There's no 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 art is harmless <laughs> when it's placed in God's hands. So I see spoken word poetry as literally you releasing prophecies and prophetic declaration because it is it is it is like you're compressing a two-hour sermon into four minutes, and the effect it will have in the hearts of people is the effect that a two hour sermon can have in two hours. Like what you want to achieve in two hours, you achieve it in four minutes. And that is how strong spoken word poetry is. And that is why the words, when they are released, they are released with such force. There's so much impression. There's so much heart palpitation when you're listening to some spoken word poetry because there's a spirit back in it. And I thank God because there was such an overflow of that, you know, giftings in this period. I'm just seeing people coming up with spoken. And I'm just like, wow, God is God is just amazing. Like he's literally flooding the body of Christ with spoken word artists. Yes. And I would say that it's not over. I'm still I'm, I, I still do spoken word poetry. In fact, Sri Mikey and I, we are planning on another one aside from worship and um, story of a lady we're planning on releasing another one. I, I would like to focus on the production more of what has been written because i realized because i don't come out <laughs> we would think there is nothing because i don't release them so there has been a number on ground already that i feel it is time that they start getting out by god's grace 
it will you know be released to the body of Christ and will be blessed by them. Fame is a gift. I would say fame is a gift and whoever the Lord has blessed with that gift because it's not it's not everyone that will release content and people would watch too. So if God has favored you and has blessed you with the attention of men, it's a gift and it shouldn't be taken with um it shouldn't it shouldn't be taken like you know you are the one on top and you know you are the boss and whatever you do will go viral nobody can you know nobody can can stand against you in course but rather it should be taken with wisdom because it's a gift means that the lord would require a um would require something from it you know when when the lord gives you something he expects returns which means that the fame he has given you is expecting you to use it wisely and to glorify him and to glorify his kingdom to glorify him yes so the lord would have you behave wisely so my advice to those who would want to be famous would want to just you know some people just want to be famous because they just want to show that me and daddy have made it I'm there. I'm there now. Nobody can. <laughs> all those, all those are thoughts I have, I'm, I, that I can't make it see. I'm there now. When you finally get there and the Lord has given you that attention that you've so craved for, it will be wise for you to walk wisely, to walk circumspectly, you know. And we shouldn't, it's very important that as believers, we should try as much as possible not to live with the worldly perspective of of fame and significance because a famous person might not necessarily be significant in heaven you know there's something that i really really there's um a story in the bible that i really really love and it's just it's a story of daniel and particularly when daniel had his 21 days fast and you know he was fasting because of his his land his people and then the angel came and then the angel said something to daniel the angel said daniel oh man highly revered oh man highly regarded oh man deeply loved like the translation just said different message said oh man of of um oh man of high quality you know the angel just said all this and <laughs> the part that struck me was the fact was was um where the words the angel was using and it just showed that this man is known in heaven he's highly known in heaven and i'm so sad that daniel was popular then because he had lived four kings so he was popular but aside from him being popular on earth he was popular in heaven because of one thing his character his character was consistent his character was so consistent he was wise in his dealings when he entered the king's um, palace, he didn't just, you know, forget whatever he had learned in the land of in the in in the land of Israel. He didn't he didn't forget the God of his parents. He didn't just his head wasn't blown away like his fellow colleagues that started eating and chopping the king's meal, the meals that were sacrificed to idols. No, he he walked circumspectly. You know, he chose to fast for two years. He and his friends. He he said he wasn't going to worship the king. Like he was God fearing. He was he was character built. He was a man that was wise, and he was famous. And because of such consistency in character, he was known not just on earth but in heaven. He was highly revered and highly regarded. So, the most important thing that you should you know focus on is if you are if you have any significance or any weight in heaven and and before the lord that is just the most important thing because if you keep looking at yourself on earth then you will easily get swayed and easily get distracted so yes fame is a gift and the question asks is what are you using that fame to do are you blessing lives with it are you using the fame to show your fellow christians that you've made it are you what exactly are you using the fame for you know and it's not everyone that will be famous or that should be famous there are those that the lord has called into secrecy to intercede those he has called into secrecy to you know be the fall back in the church back in his body so if the lord has called you to do that and you're forcing fame upon yourself then you are doing yourself a disservice so it's important that you rather go and seek the face of the lord to know what exactly he wants you to do and if fame comes with it all glory to god if it doesn't all glory to god Um, dad and mom, 
uh, Mike and Gloria Pamiloye, they have been such an amazing, <laughs> they have been my number one role models in virtually everything, in parenting and in ministry. You know, there has, there has been so many things that they have, you know, cautioned me and my brothers against that has saved us from unnecessary mistakes, you know, and I can't even, I don't even know where to start from. As regards parenting, how seriously they took our spiritual growth, my goodness, they took it seriously. And I could see that, you know, it's a trend on social media when parents say that, oh my God, how do we even raise our children in this day and era whereby you teach them one thing today, by the time they get on their phone, they are on learning everything they've learned. But mom and dad, they so focused on the spiritual and I could really understand why what was entering our head faster than normal and why even when even when they are not there there's just like we just can't do some things because of how much how much they have they have soaked our head in prayers if i will say that not that we didn't make some mistakes of course of course we made mistakes we were i'm i'm still a youth we are still youths you know we have been teens we have been children we've definitely made some mistakes but you know, the repercussions were really, really tapered down because of mercy, because of grace, because of the prayers and because of how seriously, you know, they took our cases before the Lord. And it's, let me just encourage parents out there that whenever, um, whenever you get overwhelmed with, you know, what is going on in the world and with your children, I just want you to know that um, you are, never forget that you are guardians, never forget that you are just passages that the Lord released those seeds through which means that the lord is their you know their father god is god literally owns them so which means you have to take their matters and their cases before the lord more often than than ever you can do that every single day pray in the spirits confess over their lives because as parents your words carry weight and it carries it because you are the legal guardian of these children on earth and because of that, your words have authority. Words are seeds and their hearts are like soils. So let your words be implanted in their hearts and let it germinate good and fruitful, you know, trees of life. So as parents speak to them, confess, confess, confess and pray a whole lot. And um, another thing that they really inspired us is how they handled ministry in the wisdom aspects and how much they gave my goodness there are so many things that they have really you know that um they've really um taught us by just us watching them and another advice to parents is your children are watching you they are really watching you they are watching and they are seeing how much you take time on your phone they are seeing how you talk to your spouse they are seeing how you handle those around you they are seeing how you take care of your home they are seeing how you relate with one another. So um, children learn more with what they see than what they hear. So it's important that what you want to see in them, you act it as well. <laughs> grace. <laughs> grace. God's grace has been abundant, has been overflowing. Um, I learned to not hold things in and by me by holding things in i mean i learned to let things go whenever things are beyond your control let it go and breathe breathe in breathe out another major um thing that has really helped me is joy the Bible says that the joy of the lord is your strength so your strength is found in god's joy and how do you get joy? How do you, you know, receive the joy of the Lord? The Bible said that with joy shall you draw from the wells of what? Salvation. I have been saved. Why should I be sad? Why should I be burdened? Why should I be morose? So whenever I feel overwhelmed, I talk to him. I talk to my father that I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling this way. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I don't like how I'm feeling. Help me. I receive your joy. And there's a supernatural strength that will just... Mm, <laughs> like just come in <laughs> and then would really help me to handle this handle that and i realized that so many things that we are burdened about it's not as serious as it's not really that intense it's not really that serious i have an example just a few days ago i was feeling overwhelmed for some reason and i was in church so i just took a break before getting to the service i just went to the office i just sat down and i spoke to the lord about it how 
I need his strength. I need his joy. And before, before I stepped down, I was still feeling that way. But as soon as I entered the service, there was just this overflow of peace and joy and just, you know, just it, it was it was just wonderful it was simply the working of the holy spirit and he's our comforter he's our helper that, that that's why he's with us so let us make use of the holy spirit and before i left the church that day it was just amazing and i was wondering that is this me that i was feeling this i realized that if nothing whatever is troubling you trust me the lord can handle it the holy spirit can handle it so give it to him and receive his joy and be strengthened in his presence so that's how I've been able to <laughs> cope. Life. Well, life is a gift. You know, because there are some that have gone and they never knew that they were going when they went. <laughs> they just went. But the life that we have now is a gift. And the max one can live is 120, 130 years. But what's important is where you spend your eternity. That is the most important and the most amazing aspect is the fact that we are using this life that we are living now to determine how eternity will be. So it's important that this short time we have here, we make the best use of it by seeking the face of the Lord, by laying it on God's altar, by bringing the life that we're living now before the Lord to ask him what exactly he wants us to do because it is truly a life that is chartered by the Lord that will make or that will um, fulfill purpose, number one. It's truly a life that is chartered by the Lord that will make sense. That will make sense. So it is, it is, very, it is very sad when I see young people and all they are focused on is how to make it in life and they, they have like they they refuse to carry the lord along they don't they don't they have it's just sad when i see that and their definition of making it in life is have a good paying job you know settle down quickly and then just go about their day-to-day -day activities there are many people that have thought like that and right after they feel oh my god i have made it in life few years down the line they are gone and then they realize that they spent the majority of their life trying to live for just two years. But then when they now cross over to eternity, they have nothing stored up for eternity. So it's important that the life they are living now is very flimsical. It's like, it's, it's literally like a breath. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. So it's important that we focus on what the Lord will have us do. Because like I said, it is truly a life that is chartered by the Lord, that is guarded and, you know, guided by God's will that will make sense at the end of the day. My name is <laughs> Oluwadara Simigria Gomba Oyo. I'm a member of um, TED. I co-host True Talk with my sisters, Manuela and Tulope Magbamiloye. You can watch a number of our episodes on Damila Magbamiloye's YouTube channel. It will immensely bless you. We are focused on reconciling the world to God through the truth of God's word. And I pray and I believe you'll be immensely blessed when you watch, you know, our episodes. God bless you. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. I wasn't expecting this. This is... Oh my God. This is actually for thank Ted. <laughs> this is not for Beyond Entertainment, yes, you know. Thank this you. is for Ted. Mm. Thank you so much for coming. Thank we appreciate so it. Much. God bless you. You bet. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, you want to Oh my Jesus. Okay, we're well, sure. Yes, yeah, so... But... Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and so that forget And this is beyond entertainment And this is beyond entertainment Beyond entertainment
keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.